How's it going, everyone? This week, I'm going to share with you 12 ways in which Capture One may be a better photo processing app than Adobe Lightroom. Good to see you again. My name is Todd Domini. I make videos every week here on YouTube on the topic of landscape photography. I do uh, product reviews of photography gear, and I also do uh, photo processing tutorials as well. So this week I'm going to be talking about Capture One. After last week, when I did uh, a video highlighting 10 of my favorite tips and uh, photo editing techniques using Adobe Lightroom. I have been using Adobe Lightroom since the very first beta when it came out. And I mean, I've been using Photoshop since, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, a very long time. I mean, I guess you could say I'm kind of a diehard Adobe user. I've been using Lightroom and Photoshop for so long. I'm so comfortable with them. And I've just, quite frankly, never seen the point of trying out anything different. But all that changed a few weeks ago where I've just been hearing things over the past, you know, two to three years about Capture One. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to download it. I'm going to give it a try and, you know, just out of curiosity and just see how different it is from Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, before we start talking about Capture One though, there are a couple of uh, small items of business that I want to get to. I've had some people contact me and ask me about prints, people who are curious to know if I sell uh, prints of my landscape photography work. And up until this point, the answer has always been no, not out of a philosophical thing or anything like that, but just simply because I just wasn't selling them at the time. I wasn't creating them. Well, I just want uh, to announce here and let people know that I am currently building out a new portfolio website, which is something I've been wanting to do anyway. And as part of that site, I'm going to be selling a limited edition prints of my work. This is uh, one in particular that I'm going to be uh, selling. This is one, uh, I think I, yeah, I showcased this uh, in a couple of videos now. This was shot out in Death Valley, California. Another image, here's another one that I'm going to be uh, selling. This is one that I shot out in uh, White Sands National Monument in New Mexico. This is a black and white print, obviously very minimalist. Uh, one of my favorite sand dune photos that I've uh, captured. So if you're interested in um, prints, I'll be talking more about that soon. Okay, uh, one last uh, item of business. I apologize for the delay. I just had a lot to talk about in this video. Uh, I need to give away one of these ND filters. A month ago, I shared a review where I picked up eight solid neutral density filters, all three stop 82 millimeter compared them all head to head, ran them through a whole bunch of tests. In that review, I mentioned the fact that, you know, as a way of saying thank you to those of you who've been uh, leaving just you know, really wonderful, insightful comments, been asking questions. I thought the least I could do would be to give away one of the top ND filters from that review. So to pick a winner, I took all the comments from that video and I put them into one of those online random picker applications. Believe it or not, it's a thing. And the winner, the one that came out on top, the one that has uh, their pick of one of these three ND filters is Xjester1975. Now, because DM is not a thing with YouTube, there's no way for me to reach out and get in touch with you, Xjester1975. Great name, by the way. Get in touch with me. My email address is down below in the description. Okay, sorry for the long intro, but let's get into it. Let's talk about Capture One. If you've never heard of Capture One, Capture One is not made by Adobe, unlike everything else in the world. But Capture One is made by a company called Phase One. Phase One is the company that manufactures those crazy, uh, expensive high resolution digital medium format cameras. You may have uh, seen one here or there before. The thing that's really interesting about Capture One is that typically when a camera company makes their own proprietary software for their own camera equipment, the results typically aren't that great. And people tend to ignore that software and use industry standard tools like uh, Photoshop and Lightroom instead. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I have not been using Capture One for very long. I just downloaded a trial a couple of weeks ago, but I've been using it a lot to edit images with, and I've come up with 12 ways that I think are very compelling. Okay, feature number one, and it's a big one, 
layers. You can see them by you know opening the layers palette here. And the first thing you see here is background. And background is just basically like the single layer in uh, Lightroom. But if you want to add additional ones, you come over here to this plus symbol and you can add an empty layer, a filled layer, a clone layer, a heel layer. And by doing this, then you're able to more effectively separate your work. You could separate things like color edits from exposure. You could separate any of your cloning or healing or you know removing dust and scratches. And you know, think about it, especially if you use Photoshop and if you divide these things up across multiple layers, you can do the same thing here in Capture One. Okay, feature number two, RGB values. Now, I guess it's because I've done a lot of digital design in my professional career, but I just love being able to see numerical RGB values when editing a photo. So when you mouse over the image here, you're able to see up here in the top toolbar in Capture One, it, it displays the numerical RGB values of whatever is underneath your pointer. It's fantastic because a lot of times your eyes can deceive you when you know trying to accurately judge color of an image but numbers don't lie. And so being able to see it in RGB, numerical RGB form is really helpful. This actually goes one step further into you know, something that I think is just really brilliant. So if you go to this uh, dropdown and select add color readout, you can drop these little uh, uh, RGB channel displays wherever you want them. So I could put one there and I could put one there where there's you know, a strong highlight happening on these trees here. The reason this is useful is because if you're doing product photography or really any kind of work where you want to make sure that not only is your white balance correct, but you want to make sure that your uh, your shadows and your highlights are color neutral as well, because sometimes you can get color cast in one of those areas. You can drop one of these color readouts over that space, and then I can be making adjustments to uh, white balance. I can adjust the tint and my changes uh, update in real time with these readouts. Okay, feature number three, presets in Capture One are contextual to the controls. What does that mean? Well, if you currently use Lightroom, you are undoubtedly familiar with presets. You know, presets are a way of saving settings from the develop panel. And the way that Adobe uh, design presets is that a preset in Lightroom can include you know, values for everything in the develop panel. I mean, like every single setting, or it could just include like one uh, settings change. It's literally a one size fits all approach. The way that Capture One did it, however, the way that it makes this app different is that presets are contextual. So for example, I could come down here to film grain, open this preset drop down here, and I can see that Capture One comes pre-built with uh, some built in uh, presets that I can choose from to be applying film grain. But then as you can see, I can also create my own value for film grain. I can save it as a preset. I can then share that preset with someone else. Is it better to have presets contextual and localized to the controls? Or is it better to have all your presets in one panel that you can go to as they are in Lightroom? I mean, I guess it depends on how your own brain works uh, and what you're, uh, what you're comfortable with. But I have to say, I'm very surprised uh, how much I like having presets uh, just right where I'm actually doing the work. And that way I know where they are. Feature number four, superior handling of highlights. Now, I have to say, this really took me by surprise when I started editing a raw file, an image that I was already very familiar with in Lightroom and seeing how it uh, would be processed by Capture One. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This particular image here that you're looking at, this was shot in uh, Banff up in Canada last year. And it's intentionally a bit blown out. This is actually one frame of three separate exposures that I shot in order to create an HDR image. As you can see back here in the background, these peaks are you know, rather blown out. You know, it's, it's actually almost clipped. If I mouse over the highlight uh, clipping up here, you can see this little red patch down here. Now, what you can do in order to you know, help normalize the image and bring back some of the detail there is to drop the highlights uh, down. Now let's take a look at the exact same thing, exact same technique in Capture One. I'm going to switch over to Capture One. And now this is the exact same raw file. 
if I come over here to where highlights are, which is in this panel called High Dynamic Range, and then drop highlights down again to, let's just go all the way to negative 100, there is a, a noticeable difference between how Capture One handled the highlights in this region versus Photoshop. I'm going to show them side by side here for you so that you can see the Capture One on the left and Lightroom on the right. And I think you will agree that, I mean, there is a real difference between the two. If it's hard to see on your screen uh, because you know, you're looking at it on a phone or something like that, what I would recommend doing, download Capture One, opening, open it up a file, do something very similar to what I'm doing here and judge the results for yourself. Because based on what I'm seeing in this image and other images that I've been testing this out with as far as dropping those highlights to see how they behave, Capture One by and large does a better job. The results are always clear. There's more detail and it just looks nicer. And it's, it's kind of hard to describe, but you just have to see it for yourself. Okay, feature number five, annotations. This kind of reminds me of like the old darkroom days where a photographer would write on a, on a print or on a contact sheet with a grease pencil. Really, really cool. There's a little toolbar up here at the top where you can select the annotations tool. And then you can come in here and you can draw on things, you can circle things. You could, I mean, especially if you were doing like a, a demonstration video like this and you wanted to talk about perspective lines or about uh, leading lines or whatever, this little annotations tool is just so cool because then you can just draw right on top of the photo. You can erase your lines, get rid of them. Uh, just a really handy little tool that Capture One provides, which is not in Lightroom. Feature number six, the Luma Curve. In Capture One, you have a combined RGB view, which, you know, when you pull this curve down, colors become more saturated. I talked about this last week in my Lightroom video. Um, and then when you push it back up, colors become uh, less saturated as the image gets uh, brighter. But the one thing that Capture One provides, which is very unique, and usually you've needed Photoshop uh, to do this, not with its curves tool, but with other tools, and that's too complicated to get into. But what Capture One provides is a Luma curve. And what Luma does, Luma is a lot like the RGB curve in which if you push uh, the curve up, then the image gets brighter. But then watch what happens when I pull the curve down. The shadows in the darker areas of the image get darker, but the colors are left alone. The colors don't become more saturated, unlike the RGB view, or rather the RGB curve, where everything just gets really dense and muddy, and then you have to go into your HSL panel and start pulling out saturation. Luma is, you know, just, it, it only affects the luminosity of a pixel. It doesn't change the underlying uh, color that's associated with it. Feature number seven, graduated filters have access to every setting, not just a subset of them. So here we are in Lightroom here, and let me just draw a graduated filter on top of the uh, image here. Now, when you do that, the uh, filter has its own little sub menu here that shows exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows. But the thing is though, is that this is only a subset of what's available in the develop panel. There are certain things missing, like you can't um, be making adjustments to vibrancy. You couldn't use a, uh, a curve or anything like that with a graduated filter. You have to use one of these uh, values as part of this sub menu of options. Whereas in Capture One, the way that it does it, if I come up here and select a linear gradient mask and then draw this on top of the photo, you'll see that in the left column over here, all of the values reset back to their default value. And that's because I'm now editing a mask. So masks, you can go in and change exposure, saturation, clarity, curves, whatever it is you wanna do. You have access to everything in this panel. Okay, feature number eight, visual color adjustments. If you've ever watched someone else do a Lightroom tutorial video and they're editing color, chances are you've probably seen them do something like this. And they'll take a slider in the HSL panel and they'll move it all the way to the left, they'll crank it all the way to the right. And the reason that you know people are doing that is because when you're moving these sliders, it's not immediately apparent you know, what in the image is going to be affected when you start moving a slider. 
Now there is a way to be a little more targeted. You can select this little um, uh, targeting tool here. I could click on, click and hold in the sky and then move up and down, and that'll push the corresponding hue sliders uh, left and right over here in the hue panel. So what's brilliant about Capture One is I'll switch over here and use a different image so it's a little bit easier to see on a video. In the color panel, in the color editor panel, inside of the color uh, uh, column over here, if you go to advanced and then use this eyedropper tool here, let's just click on the sky. And at first it doesn't seem like much is happening, but if you keep scrolling down, you'll see this checkbox for view selected color range. Toggle that on and you can see that now it's almost like a mask has been applied. And while I'm here, I should also point out it has this really awesome uh, color wheel here. And this is somewhat similar to a video editor tool where you can uh, decrease or, or rather expand the range of, of hues that are selected here. You can compress it as well. You can come down and make all kinds of adjustments to hues, saturation. And by the way, this is uh, getting back to my earlier point about layers. Well, that pattern resurfaces here in the color editor because I can then, let's just say, let me toggle this off really quick. I can then use the same color picker. I can pick blue. And now the blue tones in my image have been selected. And the reason this is so helpful is because it's, then it's the selection is already saved. So I can go back later if I made adjustments to color and then started doing some things with exposure or whatever, and then felt a need to go back and change those colors again, maybe shift their hue a little bit or their saturation. I can do that really easily because it's saved as one of the layers here in this panel. Feature number nine, skin tones. Now I am not a portrait photographer, so this isn't really applicable to me, but if you do, uh, portrait work and you find yourself spending a lot of time editing skin tones because skin can be really difficult to edit, you might want to give Capture One a try because down here in the color editor panel, there is a dedicated section for skin tone. And what's really interesting is that, you know, like I did before, you can select a particular uh, hue and then you can adjust you know, smoothness, hue, saturation, lightness, all of that. But then there's this additional box here for uniformity. And the reason uniformity is a thing is because with skin tones, oftentimes you can get kind of darker, uh, patchier areas like, you know, say like under a chin or somewhere where the light just isn't quite as even and the hues may shift. And what you want to do is, is, is create some uniformity in the color of, of your skin tone that you're editing. And that's exactly what this tool here is with available options for hue and saturation and lightness. Feature number 10, the loop tool. If you remember back in the day when Apple had a program called Aperture that was a competitor to Lightroom for a time, it had a really fantastic loop uh, interface where you could just quickly you know, pan over an image and zoom into a particular area and get a closer look at it without having to manually zoom in uh, you know, as you would like in Photoshop or Lightroom. Well, Capture One has a very similar type of loop interface and you can select it up here in the toolbar, click and hold on any region and a high resolution a preview of that area loads into the loop tool. So you're able to see what's going on with uh, that specific region of the image. Now, one other thing I noticed about the loop tool in Capture One is the fact that when you move this around the image within the histogram, the levels and the curves over here on the left side of the panel, you'll notice this uh, vertical orange line. And what that is showing is that you know, whatever is currently underneath the loop tool, it is showing you where on the histogram that specific area lines up. Feature number 11, normalize. Now this panel isn't visible by default in Capture One. So to find it, you have to go up here to the window menu, go to create floating tool, and then select normalize. Now what normalize allows you to do is this is you know, particularly important if you're doing any kind of product photography or something where color and getting exact matches of color between images is, is uh, important to you. Um, because you know, say for example, there's a particular shade of red and you wanna make sure that that specific value of red is exactly the same across a, an entire range of photos. You can use the normalize tool here to pick that color and then to be adjusting uh, your white balance and the exposure of the image in order to make those colors match. Okay, final feature, number 12, guides. Now, again, maybe it's because of my design background, I don't know, but I just love the ability to see what's happening in an image by adding guides to it, especially if I'm trying to 
um, you know, level an image or do some kind of transform to fix some distortion in it. Guides are not visible by default in Capture One. So you just come up here to the View menu, scroll down here to Guides, turn them on, and then go to Customize Guides, and you can add a horizontal guide. You can add a vertical guide, and you can also change the color of these guides. All right, so that's going to do it. If you are like me and you've been using Lightroom and Photoshop for years and you've never checked out Capture One, I would highly recommend you do just to take a look at it, just see how it's different from Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, no pressure to switch or anything like that. I mean, this video is not sponsored by Capture One. I wasn't paid to make it. I'm sure there is more to Capture One that that I have yet to find in the limited amount of time that I've been using the product. So if you are a longtime Capture One user, if you've been using it for far longer and you know and you know of things in there that it can do that make Capture One a better editing tool than Lightroom or perhaps even Photoshop, by all means, please leave a comment below and share your knowledge, share that information, and uh, tell me, what should I go check out? I'm especially liking how uh, raw images are being processed by this app. There's just something very different about its processing engine, and perhaps even better, um, I haven't had enough time to really dig into it, but I mean, from what I'm seeing on screen, it's pretty incredible, and it's really worth checking out. So congrats again to xjester1975 for winning one of the three ND filters that I'm giving away this week. Hope you enjoy it. Get in touch with me. My email address is below in the description. If you like this video today, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, it does make a big difference in the growth of the channel. And, uh, and if you want to be notified when new videos go live, I post one uh, every week. Click on the uh, the uh, bell icon below, and that will pop up a notification and let you know the moment anything new goes live. So at any rate, I appreciate your time and attention. Thanks so much for being here. See you next time.